While snakes are terrifying organisms, venomous or not, it's no secret that the poisonous snake will make its prey suffer much more before it eventually kills it. Their toxins work in two different ways. One can find the neurological system by blocking all the nerve pathways and leading them to paralysis, and the other kind targets blood cells by forcing them to clot. Now, while there's always a chance a snake might have both kinds of toxins in its venom, which means it'll slowly clot the blood, paralyze and destroy the muscles and lead to a painful death, these toxins can sometimes be strong enough to kill an elephant within hours. Now, if anyone has even the slightest knowledge about how deadly snake venom can be, they wouldn't dare imagine going near a poisonous snake. But surprisingly, there are a few daredevils who like to play with nature. One such group of people hails from the Arab countries, and they're famous globally for a unique practice involving snakes. Now, we don't know why, but they purposely feed venomous snakes to their camels. And in today's video, we'll tell you all about this practice, so make sure you watch it till the end. Why it's done, where it began, how to do it, and the consequences. All these questions will be answered. So before we dive deep into this world of deadly reptiles, take a moment to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications by clicking the bell icon. Now, initially, anyone would assume that this is a joke, but unfortunately, this habit of feeding live snakes to camels is pretty real. Though it's not a very common practice, so there isn't much data available on it. According to the ones who indulge in this practice, the snake venom is vital for the camel's health. They believe snakes help treat hemorrhagic diseases in camels. But what disease exactly is this, and how effective is this treatment? Well, the answers to this question can be found in the 7th century AD. No, you don't need to hop into a time machine and travel back to this particular time. We've got you covered. As a mentally accomplished author called Isidore of Seville, also known as Clerical Encyclopedias, is popular among history nerds and scientists for this exceptional work called The Etymologies, featuring 20 books. In these books, Isidore attempted to explain all the things and phenomena to ever exist in the world. A lot of the content is outdated and defunct according to modern science. But there is one interesting fact that makes us ponder. He wrote in one of his books that when deer are sick or weak, they tend to draw out snakes from their holes by using their breath, and then they eat these snakes. But why would they do that? Turns out it's their way of treating their illness and getting healthy again. It does seem a bit insane that a deer would be able to blow out snakes from the ground or eat it up in one go, but apparently it does happen. However, even more absurd is the notion of using snake venom to treat a disease. After all, by the law of nature, snake venom is supposed to kill you, not save your life. Although folk medicine does tend to use pretty unconventional methods, this one practice of using poison from snakes works. But using this venom as medicine is no task for a layman. You need to be a professional, a scientist, to extract the venom and use it in a way to get the desired effects. This means grabbing any snake you find and using it to stop your nosebleed isn't a possibility. Snake venom contains around 20 different constituents and most of these are protein-based compounds. According to modern research, it's been confirmed that snake venom can be used in fighting some dangerous organisms However, these results are based on experiments performed in laboratories. There's no evidence of success in humans, as there hasn't been any testing. Another obstacle in the path of this revolutionary idea is the lack of information and funding. But scientists are hopeful in proving the value of snake venom as a lethal weapon we can use to fight tropical pathogens, including bacteria, parasites, and many viruses. Theoretically speaking, it can help treat tuberculosis, malaria, leishmaniasis, and Chagas disease. All you need to do is choose the correct snake for targeting the correct pathogen. So, science supports this practice carried out by deer in the wild. It's pretty fascinating that this animal has been gifted the knowledge that would help treat any disease it suffers and kill any parasite that invades its body. A massive study was carried out in Algeria in the year 2020. In this study, it was discovered that the rate of gastrointestinal parasitic infections in camels is 48%. That's pretty high. Parasitic worm infections were found to be around 23%. 
If you don't understand why this is alarming, you need to understand that these diseases have become a serious challenge in the animal husbandry practice. The locals of the regions where camels are abundant have resorted to improvised methods for overcoming these challenges. Maybe one day they discovered a snake and decided to try using its venom to cure the diseases in camels. Though it seems logical, we believe that seeking help from a professional veterinarian would be much better. After all, the camel might have a much greater chance of dying from eating a venomous snake than from a gastrointestinal infection. But you need to understand that camels are quite sturdy and strong animals. They're well adapted to surviving in extremely harsh conditions. After all, they are desert dwellers. Their natural physiology might just be good enough to support the act of eating a snake. Camels tend to have very thick lips and unique mouth structures that help them eat all kinds of things, whether they look edible or not. For instance, a camel can consume thorns pretty easily. Besides being able to resist the deadly venom, their bodies produce much more powerful antibodies as compared to most other animals. No wonder people learn to use venom for these purposes too. Did you know how anti-venom is prepared? A small amount of toxin is injected into animals like horses and camels, who then develop strong antibodies against the venom. These antidotes are then collected from the blood of these animals. Although there's no hard and fast rule that using a camel to acquire these antibodies is necessary. As research on this subject has been slow and scarce for quite a while now, maybe scientists should have developed a simpler and easier method for this purpose. There are some other ways to create antivenom out there. These methods have been in use for the past century or so. You must understand that if science hadn't discovered antivenom, a lot of people would die annually, as even today 138,000 people die because of snake venom every year. And even if you don't die from this venom, you might suffer serious injuries or disabilities that can even be permanent. The real problem, however, isn't the absence of antivenom, it's the limited access to it. You might need between 1 to 20 vials of antivenom depending on the snake that bit you. Not to mention, it's also pretty expensive. Depending on where you live, the cost of one anti-venom vial can vary between $18 to $200 in sub-Saharan Africa, a place where snakes and snake bite injuries occur in abundance. On the other hand, in the USA, a single vial may cost anywhere around $17,000. That's just absurd. A single vial of anti-venom might cost you your entire salary, and to say you might need like 20 vials? Most antivenoms require storage at freezing temperatures. That's pretty logical and true for many other medicines and vaccines too. But in developing countries of Asia and Africa, electricity isn't always stable and continuously available either. This means the proper storage of the antivenom isn't as easy a task as it would ideally be. This is why antivenom is super expensive in the regions where it's most needed. That's where the antidote obtained from camels gains importance. This antivenom can be stored at high temperatures as camels are pretty much heat-resistant and are hardly ever phased by snake venom. They can easily eat snakes without any human help. Camels in India have been found eating snakes whenever they get the chance, and not only camels but other animals like cows and deer also consume snakes, like spaghetti. Although these animals are herbivores, they don't pass on meat being offered to them on a silver platter. So, yes, cows do eat snakes. We were surprised as you guys on hearing that, but it's a fact. And the snake doesn't have to be dead either. The cow will munch on a live snake as it munches on grass. They usually eat snakes when certain substances like phosphorus are depleted in their bodies. For them, snakes are probably the equivalent of vitamins and supplements. Animals have this natural ability to create medicines for themselves. For instance, sick chimpanzees tend to eat bitter and toxic plants called Venonia amygdalenia, and they know how much to eat, just enough to kill the parasite, but not the chimpanzee. Now, we don't know whether they just know the right dose or they've learned it by experimenting. This is a mystery we don't think anyone will be able to solve. But unlike animals, we humans decided to take a shortcut. Although many scientists did experiment on themselves to find out the correct cure and its correct dose, some people just had better instincts that led them straight to the right answer. For instance, a healer once saw a sick porcupine consuming the roots of a poisonous plant. He realized that the porcupine recovered from this and therefore the healer began experimenting with this root in tiny quantities. 
Initially, he experimented on himself and later on others in his village. Turns out it was an effective treatment for dysentery. Over the centuries, humans have improved their methods of making medicines. We've also found ways to fight many diseases that were previously considered lethal, and we now know how to remove parasites from our bodies. Though it's not all fun and games, it's often anticipated that this revolutionary victory in science is temporary. The abundance and frequent use of medicine have made our bodies too clean. This makes us susceptible to certain diseases that were being held off by a natural flora of symbiotic organisms. Turns out all microbes aren't our enemies. Some are protecting us. This is also true for domestic animals who become much weaker than their fellows who live in the wilderness. As these animals are living an unnaturally comfortable life without any worries of finding food or saving themselves from predators, their brain size has reduced greatly over time. And this isn't a long-term process. In fact, in the past 200 years, cows have lost around 25% of their brain matter. This means our modern livestock lacks all the basic survival skills and won't be able to handle life without human care or protection. That's pretty alarming. But people found a way to tackle this situation like any other. Though it seems ridiculous, this method helps. The farmers have started painting eyes on the rear side of their livestock. Most predators like to sneak up from behind, but if they think that they've been spotted, they just give up because the strength of a predator lies in a surprise attack. So it's not particularly a bad solution. Might even save the lives of many domestic animals. And like most other remedies, this one is also not a product of human intellect. Many other animals like butterflies and fish have fake eyes on their bodies to confuse their attackers. The results of this experiment were highly encouraging. Out of the 683 cows that had eyes painted on their rear, not a single one fell prey to predators in the four years of observation. Who knew such a simple solution could save so many? That was all about the practice of introducing venom into animals for various reasons. Do share your opinions on this in the comments section. We look forward to hearing your take on the matter. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. See you all soon. Goodbye.